in terms of what we expect to find. Um, so there's a bit of literature, mostly on developed country context on this. Um, so in terms of whether we would expect refugee dis disadvantage to play a role in support of racial redistribution, there's a, a <clears throat> large literature um, on developing uh, developed countries suggesting that uh, primarily it's the self-interest of um, individual voters that plays out in their decisions to support or not uh, redistribution. <clears throat> And so given that the budgets are fixed, people often opt for support to things that they would benefit from. On the other hand, there is some literature to suggest that uh, these considerations of fairness and altruism play a role in decisions to, for, to support the distribution, uh, and uh, also perceptions of fairness of social competition. For example, there are papers that show that the reason why European countries have a larger welfare state compared to America is because Europeans are more likely to think that luck in life determines more <coughs> compared to Americans who are less likely to think so. So we don't, um, you know, a priori have a certain expectation on how the perception of disadvantage would, whether they would uh, uh, play out in people's uh, decisions to support a distribution or not. Um, uh, and in terms of whether uh, refugees feel part of the society, how integrated refugees are, and whether that matters for people's um, choices to support government assistance or in favor of refugees, we know that the group loyalty and social identification are important in uh, uh, preferences around redistribution. So people are more likely to support a distribution in favor of those to who they relate to. Could it, it could be in Mm, as defined by ethnicity uh, or things like that. Um, but then we also know that these things are different depending on political economy and uh, economic context. And also we know that the integration has multiple dimensions. And so depending on whether the integration is perceived with respect to cultural identity or whether it's respect in terms of economic integration, in terms of whether the people work or not, or they're unemployed, um, these uh, dimensions of uh, integration um, are important. So we would like to think that we contribute to, to the literature in some ways. Um, in the sense that even though there are studies on redistribution preferences in, um, in general, they're mostly focused on developed countries and there's a lack of developing country evidence, uh, so we uh, provide some uh, of that. Um, and also we are looking at specific dimension of redistribution, specifically looking at government assistance to refugees, so refugee targeted uh, 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 <coughs> assistance. Um, we're also interested in perceptions. So there's um, uh, so perceptions are, <coughs> of course, objective. And it's hard to work uh, with perception-based data in statistical context. However, we also know, and we also know that uh, perceptions may not necessarily coincide with the reality. So we are, if we are looking at uh, refugee disadvantage, it may not be that individual perceptions of how refugees are disadvantaged may coincide with how indeed refugees are disadvantaged with, uh, relative to the <coughs> mainstream society. However, perceptions are important in people's, a lot of important decisions that people make, and they may indeed be more important than objective data. So we are, <coughs> we like the idea of contributing to the research that deals with perceptions. Um, uh, quite a bit of literature on studies uh, on attitudes to immigrants and our measure of whether people want to support government assistance to refugees or not can be thought of as a proxy of uh, attitudes uh, to immigrants. Um, however, this literature is mostly concerned with uh, labor migration and there's less evidence on refugees. And there seems to be uh, the case that to the attitudes to refugees are different to attitudes to migrants. In some cases, uh, interestingly, they, they can be positive, more positive than those to migrants. And again, there is a lack of evidence on developing countries. <coughs> and finally, uh, we are going to, I'll talk a little bit now about the specific context we are interested in, but refugees are often the result of conflicts. Um, and in this case, we will be looking at Caucasus, and uh, there's a, limited, a relatively limited uh, literature on the consequences of conflicts, 
particularly around the resulting displaced populations. So um, we are looking at Caucasus, uh, so three countries in South Caucasus, um, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. These are formerly Soviet Union um, countries. Um, so there have been a number of ethnic conflicts and wars uh, that erupted following the Soviet Union collapse uh, in Nagorno-Karabakh between Armenia and Azerbaijan, South Ossetia, Abkhazia, and so forth. And as of the beginning of 1990s, the estimated number of um, refugees and IDPs in this region was um, around one and a half million. So this is a large number relative to the populations in these countries. Um, so apparently there was a positive response to refugee crisis based on different sources. Uh, however, there was a challenge of policy responses and so in the long term this uh, um, seemed to be uh, not, um, not adequate, and there was a lack of resources and government inaction, and there seems to be an opinion that this has led to marginalization of refugees in some cases. So uh, we are mostly doing a quantitative research here, even though we're really interested in exploring the country context, and it's... Um, um, so we tried to get uh, some realistic ideas on what the government assistance to refugees in these countries looks like, and all is mostly anecdotal based. So it's very, very challenging to get even a basic idea on what the government assistance is. But all we know is that it, it doesn't seem to be enough uh, to meet the basic needs. So in terms of so our uh, studies uh, as of 2011, and that's basically because of data availability, so you would think that now, so just uh, providing some background on what the numbers are in these countries and the composition of the, the refugees and IDPs. So the numbers for the first country, Armenia, are somewhat misleading in terms of the, the numbers because uh, there has been some kind of change in the way refugees and IDPs are treated. So the re real numbers are much larger than they are. And so resettlement has resulted in uh, the refugees not being counted as refugees anymore. But um, we have a reason to think that the refugees are nevertheless a tangible sort of reality in, uh, in this country. Uh, in Azerbaijan and Georgia, uh, the share of refugees and IDPs are close to 7% of the population in all three cases, but particularly in Armenia. These are mostly ethnic Armenians uh, that came to Armenia from Azerbaijan because of the war. Even though they uh, share the ethnicity, in many cases there might be cultural differences as perceived by people. So to do this research, we used the Caucasus Barometer Survey uh, that was conducted by Caucasus Research Resource Centers. Um, has been used in other published studies. Um, we, the reason why we look at 2011 way is because it provides data on preferences for refugee targeted assistance and as well as perceptions um, of refugee and other standard demographic socioeconomic variables that um, are important to consider when one looks at this type of um, questions. So we restrict the sample to those who are in the age range of 21 to 65, and this is mostly to take out the students and the retirees. Um, um, we focus on those who are ethnic majority, they're not migrants, and we drop those uh, missing values and we end up with sample sizes as shown there. But if we define the age brackets a little bit differently, the results stay the same. So the variables are of interest. Uh, the dependent variable is defined as a dummy, which takes one if the respondent uh, agrees that the refugee assistance should be increased. 39% of population in Armenia agrees that their assistance should be uh, increased. This is only 27 in Azerbaijan, and surprisingly 73 in Georgia. But uh, we tried to understand uh, the country context a, a little bit, um, and we we don't know yet. We are still exploring why this number is large. It probably helps to know um, that the independent variable of interest, so the perception of refugees, uh, disadvantage is also high uh, in Georgia, so it's around 40% relative to uh, under just under 30% in Armenia and 20% in Azerbaijan. Whether people think that the refugees are integrated, um, so these numbers are very similar across the three countries and rather high, around 80% in all countries. But to an extent, this is explained by the fact that uh, most of the refugees uh, share the ethnicity. So we, our controls in the baseline model, 
include some demographic characteristics of individuals. Uh, so these are gender, their age cohort, the size of their household, and the family status, whether people are married and whether they have children. We also take into account the socioeconomic characteristics of individuals their education attainment, uh, their, whether they're employed or not, and the income of their household. And we take into consideration whether they reside in a capital, in other urban uh, locality, or whether they are from a rural area. So given how our dependent variable is defined, a dummy that takes one um, if the respondent supports government assistance to refugees, we estimate a basic profit model in a <coughs> Uh, uh, in the baseline um, approach, um, and so Y is the preference of redistribution, P is the perception of refugees, e either whether people are think that refugees are disadvantaged or whether people think refugees are integrated. We estimate models where these uh, variables are included jointly as well as where they are included one by one. The results are um, insensitive to the specification. Um, but of course, a uh, profit model, uh, model would yield uh, biased estimates because of unobserved heterogeneity. So people of all sorts of types that we can't really capture, uh, they can be different. Uh, um, uh, um, so people may respond positively to government assistance for reasons other than uh, whether they think refugees are disadvantaged or not, and we can't control for all of this in the model. So there, there is some unobserved heterogeneity. Um, of course, the standard approach to deal with this type of problem would be to estimate uh, some sort of bivariate profit model, but this requires an exclusion of at least one reliable instrument, and we weren't ide were able to identify a, a good instrument in the data. So then we're not too discouraged with that, and what we do is, first of all, we try to control for as many characteristics of individuals as we can. So in extended specifications, we control for things that we think that are plausibly related to the independent variable as well as affecting the dependent variable. And we um, also do uh, take some partial identification approach, and this is uh, inspired by Altonji and it uses the amount of selections on unobservable as a guide to the amount of selection on observables. And the idea of this is to get some, <coughs> to some measure of how large the selection on observables relative to selection on observables should be to take away the entire causal effect of the perceptions of refugees on government support, support for government assistance. So I'm just going to now quickly so talk through these results because the time is running out. Um, so we find for refugee disadvantage that this is a highly positive, uh, highly significant uh, correlate. So these are marginal effects reported here. Uh, positive, highly significant correlate of people's decisions to support uh, assistance in favor of refugees. For whether the refugees are integrated or not, we find different results in different places, which is interesting. So in Armenia, we find that people's perceptions of whether refugees are integrated. If people think refugees are integrated into society, they're more likely to support refugee assistance, whereas in Georgia, this variable is negative. Now, we can think of different ways um, uh, to, to explain this result. Um, so if people interpret integration in terms of ethnic integration, and they're likely to have a group bias, in group bias, then we, we would expect to observe what we see in Armenia. On the other hand, if we would think that the question on integration is perceived on economic grounds and whether you know, people are employed and they are members of society and contribute to that, and that then we can explain why there is a negative sign. So if you think that some, someone is well integrated in terms of their socioeconomic standing, that there is no reason to extend, um, extend help to, um, in, in their favor. Um, but again, I mean, our knowledge of country context is not sufficient at this stage to be able to um, convincingly argue why these uh, different effects would, uh, would exist, even though we can theoretically imagine that this could exist in, in, in principle. So quickly, uh, just through this, um, in terms of additional controls, we included a number of characteristics that we thought could plausibly capture some important sources of um, unreserved heterogeneity. So we generated measures of whether a person can be thought of as sexist or not based on their attitudes to women's roles in the society. Some measures of religiosity, whether people com uh, favor competition or not, whether people think labor market is fair or not. We thought that by controlling to this, we can hopefully compare people that are more similar than what we had before. 
controlling for these things, the results are the same. Uh, now reporting the Altonji ratios. So again, these are ratios to indicate to what extent the selection on observables should be relative to selection on observables to entirely take away the causal effect of the perceptions that we are interested in. So here we, what we see, and the rule of thumb can be taken, uh, the numbers that Altonji comes up with from his paper, and these are around 143, 3.5, uh, uh, 55, and he thinks that this is implausible. So by implausible means that it's unlikely that selection on observables is as large as that to take away the entire causal effect of um, the estimates that they're interested in. So therefore, the conclusion would be that it is likely that some of the effect that we estimate is causal. So if we keep that in mind and look at these numbers here, we would see that the uh, the results that we obtain in terms of how refugee disadvantage relates to people's uh, willingness to support assistance in favor of refugees, these numbers are rather high. Going back to whether people think refugees are integrated and how this affects people's willingness to support assistance in favor of refugees, we can see that only we can um, have some confidence about the numbers in Georgia that refugee assist, uh, the people's perception that refugees are integrated ne negatively relates with their willingness to support refugees. Um, so, summary, we find large positive effect of perceived disadvantage on willingness to increase government assistance to refugees. So some policy implications would follow in terms of raising refugee disadvantage um, in host country populations through media campaigns and so forth. Of course, perceived and actual measures of disadvantage may diverge. And uh, in many cases, it, there's anecdotal evidence that I, I, uh, refugees are isolated, and this may uh, be important in uh, shaping the, uh, the, how refugees are in terms of their, their disadvantage and integration and so forth. And we don't find st strong evidence uh, that the role of perceived integration matters. Um, but there, uh, there are uh, clear issues of measurement as well in terms of we don't know what the integration is perceived as, whether it is in, uh, with respect to cultural integration, economic integration, and we don't really know the composite, uh, we don't have information on what the, which refugees people have in mind when they talk about refugees. And there are obvious limitations, so we only uh, take, are able to do partial identification. We don't have an instrument to come up with robust uh, causal um, uh, inferences. Um, it would be important to understand responses to different types of refugees subject to data availability. And external validity of our study might be somewhat limited, even though we motivate it uh, by saying that, you know, there are a large number of refugees um, around the world at the moment, and important to understand, especially in developing countries, and are important to understand the responses to refugees of this type, but we have to keep in mind that we're looking at um, a set settings, three settings, where refugees are very close to the main t mainstream population in terms of their ethnicity, um, and where large-scale immigration is unusual. So we are, uh, we, we, we're cautious in, uh, um, in uh, suggesting the relevance of our studies for other country contexts. Um, and so therefore, it would be important to have some um, evidence from other countries as well. Thank you.